One minute, one minute, one minute. We don't have terrible leadership. <laughs> we actually have, again, let me tell you, we also have terrible followership. You have listened to me say it. I've been in office. Let me tell you the greatest problem that is in the, let me tell you the greatest problem that is in our country today. It is not that we have yes, the number one problem is leadership. But what is even worse? The followership. I was a governor for eight years. For eight years, from the one that I started, what do you get? First, you start seeing the so-called elites, the so-called powerful royal fathers and everybody coming to pay you cost call. They will write and say they want to see you. They come to your office. Once you open the door, they say, hey, Peter, since you came, eh? hey. The world have changed. I didn't know this is this good. You haven't done anything, no. You know yourself, you have not done anything. This person will be praising you. And your silence, yeah? hey, we didn't know there's anybody like you in this world. Ah, uh, this thing, that one, and when he's going, of course, you heard me say, when he's going, you have this bunch of people, they call protocol people. Now, who calls themselves? Ah, ah. The man is going, you know. We didn't give him anything, you know. That uh, usually when they come, they normally give them uh, maybe 200,000 or this. And, and I said, listen, hey, hey, wait a minute. This man just said he wants to see me. I didn't invite him. He was the who came here. So, why are we going to give him money? It's We're not going to give him anything, you know. It's transport fair, sir. Then you have people who say, oh. You have people who say, hey, we want to do Thanksgiving for you. A church. We must do it for you. You enter the church. You see this person, hey, since you came, God has turned this place around. God Almighty, God is it. And then, the same people will tell you, say, ah, we didn't come with anything to give. I said, the man said he wants to thank God to bless us. So, why are we going to give him money? And, he became a quarrel with people because they thought, oh, and everything. The same thing, you are going around everywhere six months after being governor or minister or anything. Somebody voted. I didn't have a house in my village. You invite people and say you're doing Thanksgiving with a big house, several vehicles. Your wife will even have a shabby uniform for the Thanksgiving. God will multiply it. This man has just stolen our money. Instead of calling police, they are celebrating him. That is the major problem of the country. Well said, sir. The you know where I got the truth? If I tell you where I got the truth, you hear me say it every day. I use one local government. One time called Obo family. Obo family is the bomber, the last town in Alhambra State. If you are going through where we call or cannot, nobody had ever visited there. I went there. The whole town was dancing. They were very happy. The parents. I looked at three little children because they were in front of me. I was fond of school children. And I said to them, they said, under 12, do you know me? Yes. Do you have any problem? He pointed, our school has no roof. The parents are here praising me and calling me His Excellency. Wonderful man. But there's a school just looking at here without a roof. The parents did not see it. The other one, they have no, they have no teacher. They have no toilet. These three people have a problem. And that's it. I once went to a secondary school and promised the secondary school that I'm going to, because I visited all the secondary schools. I once went to the secondary school, promised them that I'm going to come back before Christmas and give them a check to do their roof. 
for 7 million naira because that's what the bill I didn't do it in January every year I will bring schools to do what we call students interaction I brought this school mother of mercy let me remember the name Azibo the school is a, a young girl raised his hand a girl that was in JS1 class 1 and I said yes he said, Governor, why don't you, why is it that you don't keep your promise? Before, as he was saying it, the principal ran from the back, <laughs> held her in the mouth. <laughs> but he was just about to tell me the truth. And I said, I'm telling you what a life story. I'm telling you a life story. I'm sure when you tell this story, everybody in Anambra will tell The principal ran from the back. And I said, Principal, leave this girl to tell me. He said, you didn't keep your promise. You came to our school and he called the exact date I came, made the promise, and I didn't come back. And I said, okay, wait. I called, commission, I called the Commission of Education. I said, what happened? He said, hey, we've actually, because whenever I go to any place and promise, you must write the check. He said, we have actually done that check, but we're not delivered. I said, go and bring it. They brought it. I said, I called the young girl, said, I'm sorry, you were right. And I apologize to you. Here is your check. The same place that came from the back, I carried on here. I was going to have to So you see, this is, the, this, is the, this is the crisis. This is the crisis of our country. This is the crisis of our country. That's why I said, we must take it back. It's not whether I have one party or two party. You told him and part to tell me that they are good. Let's take it back and follow them. Absolutely.